if Mick is out of touch, then we, you know, if Gumby is gone, we can't do anything. So um, we just said, every. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you what Fleetwood Mac as a whole said, Christine, myself, Lindsay, we all said, well, this must, this is a serious break. And I uh, had had a lot of difficulty dealing with that year on the road. It was very difficult for me. I think uh, as you get older, you get worse pains, and you just, it's just harder. I mean, these, these physical pains or mental as well? Uh, you just, well, you see, it's, it all depends on both. If you get physically tired, then you get mentally tired, then you get more physically tired, and then you get more mentally tired, and you never have a chance to really rest all those powers in you that makes you who you are, uh, they never rest. So pretty soon you are really going on what I sort of call automatic pilot, which has little to do with you. It's sort of a way to get through it all, and you, and you do it. But it isn't... What I love is I love the magic. I love it when my band or any band walks on the stage and everybody gets, you know, chills. Um, I also get those same chills. When I don't get those chills, I'm very disappointed and I just want to cry. So when I came off the road last year, I was so tired and so out of touch with everything in my life, my friends, my family, uh, that I thought it's time to begin again here now. At this point, it's time for you, Stevie, to, to decide if, if you can go ahead and keep writing those songs and do all of this without this built-in family that has been surrounding you and holding you and supporting you for all these years, you know. And uh, I met uh, someone whose name is Jimmy Iovine who uh, produces Tom Petty. I met them both the same day. And I love Tom Petty stuff. I'm an avid Tom Petty fan. I'd probably be a Tom Petty groupie if I wasn't in a rock and roll band. I, uh, I said, well, wow, if he's good enough for Tom Petty, he has to be good enough for me. So it was sort of an unspoken thing from uh, a long time before we ever got around to doing the, the second month of the year Tusk tour. Um, he said, if you want to do an album, uh, I know that you're really used to being uh, this like the midnight cat queen that comes in whenever you feel like it and... and uh, you bring your satchel of all the things you do, your books, and you're all there, and you completely wreck the studio. And uh, he said, this is not how we're going to do this album. In the first place, you've only got three months. And in the second place, I don't want to waste my time with, like, you know, a, car a, a cartoon. And he was telling you, yeah, you want to do this seriously. He was saying, this is not big rock and roll. This is something you have never done before. You are not a proven solo artist in any way, shape, or form. You have been protected like the baby, little baby egg, you know, for seven years. This is something that you have to do alone, Stevie. And if you want to do this, then I have to know that you are going to be very, very strong and very disciplined. And if you don't want to do that, if you want to be recording like you've always recorded and take months and months and months, then find somebody else because I cannot work that way. And nobody had ever looked at me and said, I'm, I'm leaving, basically. I don't need to go through this with you. And, I mean, I just went, wow, you know, I guess he doesn't think I'm really uh, that big of a deal. Uh, he's threatening me to leave, and we haven't even started the album yet. So I really took a couple of deep breaths and said, this is what, you, this is what I wanted my whole life, was to do this album. I wanted to do a few of my songs that I loved for all the people in the world that I love. He gave me the chance. And he was telling me right there that if I didn't want to really, really be a soldier, that he didn't want to do this with me. And uh, I believed him. Were you scared at that point? I was absolutely scared to death because I didn't really know whether or not I would be able to conform to this new disciplinary way of life. You know, uh, not 50 people at the studio every night. All of my girlfriends were not welcome. All of my friend, friend, friends, you know, were not welcome. Uh, really, very few people were welcome unless it was in the scheme of what we were doing 
to be finished in three months because I had to go to Paris to record with Fleetwood Mac, with or without Belladonna being finished. Most of the songs uh, on the album were written years ago. Um, okay. Um, in that whole in that whole sense of getting out from that family and going out on your own. Um, during the years, as those songs were being written, did you give them to the group to possibly record with the group? Or Absolutely. Why did awesome. they, they said no then? They didn't say no. They just, uh, um, they, you see, I have like my set of demo tapes, which is about like four cassettes back and front, big, big, long cassettes of just like a bunch of songs that start from long before even after the glitter fades, which is 1972. And they have their set of Stevie's tapes, just like everybody else in my life does. You know, there must be thousands of them out. Uh, they were absolutely welcome to anything that I wrote, except I would say Belladonna and Edge of Seventeen, because they were written, Belladonna was written for, to be the meaning full word of this album and I couldn't give them that. I would give them anything, but I couldn't give Fleetwood Mac Belladonna. Let me ask you uh, about that name. And we, we think of, most of us think of Belladonna and think of this, this drug that'll kill you. Uh, what, what is it to you? That's, uh, everybody that talks to me about it has a different way of putting it. You just put it in a very different way than anybody else has ever put it. I do my best. I, I can see that. Um, uh, and the woman was so tired that the woman could have really disappeared. And I don't mean die or anything. I just mean withered away out of this whole thing because it was just too difficult for me. Um, I never thought that my face would become thin. I have a lot of trouble losing weight as it is. And I became thin. And I became unhappy. And all the wonderful things that money could buy cannot change the way you feel inside when you're by yourself in a hotel room at night. Um, the saving grace is that Sarah was recorded and Dreams was recorded and Goldest Woman, the songs that are such a part of my life that I love. The saving grace is that my music is a cross. The reason for Belladonna was to get a little bit more of that out because I could have the space, the room to to put a few more things. I'm not a pushy person. You know, I, I wish there was a way I didn't ever have to tell people that I'm even bummed because I can't show them everything that I write because I write, that for, I write for you. I write for everyone that listens to me. I don't write for me. I write because somebody is telling me to say some of these things. And when I can't get them out to people, it breaks my heart because they sit in a file cabinet. That's why I did Belladonna. It seems very important, obviously, for you to connect with the people that listen to your music. Um, yet, uh, you haven't actually toured uh, to promote this album. Is there any specific reason why you haven't gone out? Well, uh, that takes time. And uh, I have to wait for the uh, musicians, because they're all, like, committed for the rest of their lives. And... Um, <laughs> Strangely enough, everybody has their price, but these musicians are very honorable. So if I want them, then I have to wait until they can go. We may be able to go and do a few shows here and there uh, in a couple months. That's what I'd like to do. Just i just like to go and sing these songs a, f a few times for somebody. Um, simply, the girls and I know every song without... We can do them a cappella with a piano player. It, we're ready now to yesterday. Um, it'll be difficult to put like a big thing together right now because I have to go back into recording with Fleetwood Mac and it's getting to be winter and it's really, it's cold. <laughs> it's too cold to go back to the cold places and I'd feel like I was really cheating everybody if I just toured where the sun was shining. It'd be great in Southern California. It would be great here, but uh, I would love to do that. And as soon as we can, you know, when it fits into the scheme of everything, um, I will.